and only one person had the nerve to shoot. And that was that was the hitter. That's that's the one that was with the business. That's the one that didn't give up. But I got to get him. He was the I got to get him guy. The only man that was right next to Pac during his most critical moments revealed some interesting information before he died. Suge was indeed involved in the famous shooting that ultimately took Pac's life. He planned the whole thing out. There are some wild stories about Tupac's death. Everyone knows that there were powerful folks who wanted him gone for good. Death Row's inner circles were a corrupt temple, and it crashed down soon after Pac was gone. So Tupac Shakur and Suge Knight, the big boss of Death Row Records, went to watch a boxing match between Bruce Sheldon and Mike Tyson in Las Vegas. After the match, they were leaving the MGM Grand, but one of Suge's buddies, Trevon Trey Lane, spotted a guy named Orlando Baby Lane Anderson from a rival gang in the lobby. Now, earlier that year, Anderson and his crew tried to rob Lane in a Foot Locker store, and Lane told Tupac about it. So when Tupac saw Anderson, he confronted him, and a fight broke out. Tupac and Shug's crew jumped in and things got crazy, but hotel security eventually broke it up. After the brawl, Tupac went back to his hotel, the Luxor, Las Vegas. He told his girlfriend, Kadada Jones about the fight and promised to return to her after he went to Club 662, which was owned by Suge Knight. Tupac changed his clothes and hopped into a BMW sedan with Suge and they headed to the club for a charity concert. Now here's where things took a turn for the worse. At around 11 to 11.05 p.m., Tupac and Suge were pulled over by the police for playing loud music and not having license plates. They got off with just a warning and continued to drive. Then, at around 11.15 p.m., while they were stopped at a red light, a white Cadillac pulled up next to them. Someone from the back seat of the Cadillac rolled down the window and started shooting at Tupac's BMW. Tupac got hit four times, and Suge got hit too. Despite their injuries, Suge managed to drive them to a nearby location where they were pulled over by the police again. The police called for paramedics, and both Tupac and Suge were taken to the hospital. Unfortunately, Tupac's injuries were severe, and despite efforts to save him, he died on September 13, 1996. There were a lot of rumors and speculation about who was behind the shooting, but the case remains unsolved to this day. Some people claim that Tupac's last words were, fuck you, to a police officer who asked about the shooters, but there was conflicting information about that one. It's a tragic and mysterious story that still captures people's attention to this day. But one of the people who had first-hand information and decided to tell what he knew about Pac's death was Big Frank, the only personal security that Tupac apart from death row security. Frank Alexander, also known as Big Frank, discussed his time as Tupac's bodyguard and shared his perspective on the night of the Las Vegas shooting, as well as his thoughts on the shooter's identity. Originally hailing from Chicago, Frank lived in a rural area of Western Marietta, near the foothills of the Santa Ana Mountains. When it comes to Frank's background, he served in the Marines, pursued amateur bodybuilding, and even worked in the Orange County Sheriff's Department. Frank revealed that he initially became Tupac's bodyguard through a friend who offered him a job in security for Death Row Records. He mentioned that Tupac appreciated having a big and reliable guy like him around. And they developed a close bond due to their shared energy and fast-paced lifestyle. Frank also mentioned the various perks he enjoyed, such as being paid around $300 a day and being introduced to Tupac's codename for weed, Candy. Frank shared that Tupac had a reputation for being involved with numerous women, including Madonna, Faith Evans, O.J. Simpson's daughter, and Kadada Jones, Quincy Jones's daughter. During his time as a bodyguard, Frank had the opportunity to meet notable individuals like Samuel L. Jackson and Tim Roth, and he mentioned Tupac's close friendship with Mike Tyson. Frank also acknowledged Tupac's love for fighting and his role in defusing potential conflicts before they escalated. He confirmed that a fight occurred between Tupac and Orlando Anderson, a member of the Southside Crips, on the night of the tyson Selden fight, which Frank believed might have been connected to the subsequent shooting. Frank clarified that he was not with Tupac during the shooting, as he had been asked to drive Kidada's car. Despite being blamed by Suge Knight for Tupac's death, Frank explained that he followed Tupac's instructions and did not ride with him because it was not relevant to his job as a bodyguard. After the shooting, Frank received death threats from Death Row Records, which prompted him to distance himself from the label. He expressed no fear of Suge Knight and stated that he no longer had any contact with Death Row personnel. Frank's motivation for writing his book, Got Your Back, stemmed from his desire to set the record straight about Tupac's death and debunk false info circulating in magazines. Did Suge Knight set Tupac up? That's the question that everyone asks in the hip-hop world. Back in 1996, Big Frank's thoughts on the whole situation with Suge Knight and Tupac were completely different. 
He couldn't understand how someone would ride in a car with someone who had put a hit on them and trust that they wouldn't get shot, especially when bullets were flying through their car. He talked about it during a TV show and mentioned it elsewhere too. The LAPD investigation talked about the corrupt cop who was involved in the killings of Biggie and Tupac. And guess what? It named one of the bodyguards, Kevin Hackey, who used to work with me and Tupac. Kevin later came out and said that he was an FBI informant, sent to infiltrate death row for drug racketeering. Nobody knew it at the time. It completely changed Big Frank's perspective. And that's when Frank started noticing more about the LAPD cops being involved, and he began entertaining different theories and conspiracies about it all. He started asking questions like, who could I trust to sit next to me and fire into my car if I had set it up? It had to be someone with training, maybe even another police officer. That's why Frank absolutely believes that somebody set Tupac up. And guess what? That person is Suge Knight. Based on the public information available from the FBI investigation and everything that he himself uncovered and discovered, he thinks Suge was the guy who set up Pac. The problem with solving Suge's involvement was that they couldn't bring anyone to trial because all 17 informants refused to testify. Without witnesses, you can't build a case, and the district attorney won't pursue it. That's why the LAPD and Las Vegas police still have these cases open as cold cases. Someone needs to solve them. Moreover, Frank talked with witnesses and people who testified on camera in his documentaries. Those people talked about how Tupac and Suge had a heated fight in New York at the MTV Awards. After a video shoot, Tupac even told one of the bodyguards, who used to be a good friend of Big Frank, that he felt like a dead man walking. He didn't want to go to Vegas, and he had a bad feeling about it. This was on September 6th, a Friday, just after the shooting incident with Toss It Up. And here's another thing, Tupac had family matters in Atlanta and didn't really want to go to Vegas that night. He wanted to deal with his cousin, who was one of the outlaws, but something changed his mind and persuaded him to go. Big Frank was found dead in his home in Marietta. He was only 54 years old when he passed. While some reports suggest that his death involved a gunshot wound, the exact cause is still under investigation. Some believe it may have been a suicide. Some people find Frank's side of the story more than credible. If someone knew all the little invisible details that we as outsiders cannot reach, that would be Frank. One person wrote, Trust me, the bodyguard, the maid, and the butler always know everything, period. And another person hinted at the fact that Suge looked different in one of the photos on that night before Tupac was shot dead. Their comment writes, Suge looks focused, like on a mission to drive to the agreed location while Pac's haunting picture speaks for itself. He had a feeling and knew it was coming. R.I.P. legend. As for the person who was behind the trigger, well, some say it was Orlando Anderson, some say it wasn't. Some claim that it was definitely Orlando. Another person who was responsible for Tupac's safety was Mob James. James used to keep the death row boys in check, and Pac was just one of the people who he would guard. During an interview with Vlad TV, Mob James reflected on Tupac's death. DJ Vlad brought up an article mentioning Anderson as Tupac's shooter, although he pointed out that it wasn't confirmed. James quickly disagreed, stating that they weren't certain about Anderson's involvement. He said, but We're not sure if it was Orlando. It was clearly sure. in that car. We're sure. Well, not exactly because there was four people in the car, only one person still alive. And only one person had the nerve to shoot. And that was that was the hitter. That's, that's the one that was with the business. That's the one that didn't give up. But I got to get him. He was the I got to get him guy. Anderson was initially named as a suspect in Tupac's murder during the initial police investigation, but the Las Vegas police later stated that there was no direct evidence linking him to the crime, as reported by the LA Times. The following year, Tupac's mother filed a wrongful death lawsuit against Anderson, accusing him of killing her son. Anderson himself died in 1998, just two years after Tupac, in a gang shootout that also claimed the life of another person who was also believed to be associated with the Southside Crips. So what y'all think about this story that Big Frank told? Was he right about Suge Knight really being the one who wanted Tupac gone? If so, that would mean Suge Knight was more than just a big bully. He was a snake who manipulated everybody around him. Let us know what you think about it down in the comments section below. If you like this video, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe to our channel. And y'all already know the drill. You gotta keep it real.